Dr. Peterson, this is a respectful challenge to your statement. To believe in God is to commit your life. From this Sean Ryan interview. What do you mean you're going to commit to that? That's what Christ calls upon people to do. That's at the core of a genuine Christian commitment. Because I think you may be raising the bar too high and creating a spiritual barrier to entry. Painful, unjust death accompanied by betrayal, the perfidy of the mob, and the dominion of the tyrant. And you're going to welcome that. I've learned some life-changing things from you, and I appreciate everything you're doing to expose the forces that are at work in the world to take away our freedoms. I hope you'll consider my perspective in the freedom I have found in following Jesus. A freedom where I don't believe he needs us to, or even wants us to, make a commitment to obey him. Good morning, Sky. Hi, my little babies. And where making such a commitment might even hold us back from knowing him better. When you said this... To believe in God is to commit your life. That's what the belief is. That's the most difficult possible commitment. I agree that would be the most difficult possible commitment. In fact, I think that commitment would be impossible because there's no way we can promise to always obey God. And that's why I'm sending you this video, because in reading the scriptures, I've come to believe that the Lord doesn't actually require us to make that impossible commitment. I grew up learning the ABCs of being saved. Accept, believe, and commit. That's what we were taught. But when I read the Bible for myself, I found the A and the B, but I didn't find the C. So in asking Jesus about it and searching the scriptures, I found that this commitment word was an odd one in English. Don't need my flashlight. I found that commit, like when Jesus was on the cross, was a totally different word from commit as in make a promise. But as a youth worker, I saw a lot of kids make commitments to Christ, come back the following year to camp and recommit their life to Christ or make a stronger commitment to Christ, and it just never worked. Don't need my jacket. But after all that searching, I got to a very different place, and I hope you'll take a minute to don't need the camera. Hope you'll find a minute to consider it. Morning, chickens. When Jesus said to God his Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Okay, bus is moving. I learned that he was trusting God, not making a promise. He was trusting God completely because he was humbling himself by giving up 100% control. So I started teaching my kids in my cabin something different. Something that seemed much more consistent with scripture. I taught them that it was better to not make a vow than to make a vow and break it. And that making a promise to God was the best way to break a vow, guaranteed. So instead I taught them about Jesus as Lord. The best I could put it together in scripture was that when we believe in Jesus, he enters our heart with his Holy Spirit, and he becomes our Lord. And he will exercise that Lordship by leading us when we're obedient, and disciplining us when we're not. God promises to discipline us. It says that if we are without discipline, that we are not actually his children. So what I started telling my kids, not these ones, was that God would keep us on the path, not us. We still have to respond to him in obedience, but we don't have to make that promise ahead of time. Because if we get off of the path, he will discipline us to get us back on it. Hey, big fella. Go. Back up. We're still committing to God. But it's the other meaning of the word. <laughs> He's right. We're entrusting our lives to him to bring us back onto the path like a loving father. So my premise for you to consider is that it's a journey, 
and we don't need to be perfect to get onto the path. Or no. We just need to trust the Lord to lead us and to kick our butt when we get out of line. Alright. Hey, coach, you guys. Here we go. Let me through. You. It says that he has laid out the good works for us to walk in. So while some people might be called to all the things that you list in that video, others might not be. Or maybe they will be, but it won't be until way down the path when the Lord has done an amazing work in them. Because while God never tells us to make a commitment or promise to Him, His promise to us is to make us more like Jesus so He can get us ready for what He's going to call us to in the future. But to get onto the path, He accepts us just the way we are. We just need to repent of our sin to kick things off. So thanks for considering my perspective. I've got another video here about how our propensity to make promises to God is one of the ways we try to control his work in our lives. I'd be stoked if you check it out.